Welcome back to my channel and another Topic Tuesday here. So today's topic is polishes that you love to have, polishes you love to own, but that you never ever wear. And right out the gate, I should probably just say like 90% of my collection. Uh, no, I mean like obviously I have a big collection so not everything gets the love it deserves, but I still actively want to wear a lot of the polishes in my collection, but there are some that I bought just to have them, not because I was like dying to wear them. Maybe once, I think all of these on my list I've worn at least once, but a lot of them I just like to just have them. There's a lot of stuff like that in my life where I'm like, that's weird, I want it. I'm not gonna use it for anything, but I just want it in my home so that I can just glance upon it from time to time and admire how strange it is or how ugly it is or whatever. There's just, I just like stuff like that. So of course that translated into my polish hobby as well. And there are several polishes in my collection that I love to have. I don't want to get rid of them, but I also actively don't really care to wear them either for a variety of reasons, which we will get into right now. So I have eight different ones to talk about. Four are like actual polishes and then the other four are more like full collections you'll see when we get there but let's start with the actual individual polishes and number one on my list of polishes i love to have but don't i don't wear these uh number one is essie's belugaria i have worn this i'm almost certain exactly one time and that was it that was enough I got the full Belugaria experience. I didn't need a repeat. I bought it because it was just, it looked like a weird polish. And I was just like, oh, it's just a textured polish. It's a little bit strange, but man, I was not prepared for what it truly is. It is so packed with these huge reflective glitters, not reflective, but like hollow, hollow glitters and like caviar beads and like maybe shards of glass. I don't know because when I wore it that one time, I woke up covered in <laughs> scratches on my face, on my arms and chest. Like because in the night, I, like the polish, I, I sleep on my hands. Like I sleep on kind of on my front and I like put my hands under me. Is that weird? I don't know. What's a normal way to sleep? But like I think I just like clawed up like that and scratched my whole face and neck and everything. Not to mention taking it off, that's like a six hour job. It's, it is, I've said this before, it's like roofing tar, it is so gritty. It's like when it gets really hot and you know they put the tar on the roads to repair the cracks and that starts to melt and all like the debris and rocks and gunk gets stuck in that. That is what Essie's Belugaria is in a bottle. like. You put that on your nail, you're getting like the gummiest road tar on your nail. So yeah, I like to have it because it's funny. It's a little bit weird. It's one of those stranger polishes that you're like, how did this get made, you know? But I'm never actively like, man, I should wear that one. No, once was enough. Number two on my list is actually a twofer because I got these at the same time, but they are Essie's Starry Starry Night and Essie's Imported Bubbly. These are the very first two polishes that I can recall buying at the start of this hobby. Like I bought nail polishes before throughout my life, mainly black nail polishes because that's all I wore. And nail polish wasn't really a hobby, but more just like an accessory that you'd wear from time to time for me. These were the two that kicked off the hobby portion of my life in nail polish. I think I'll talk more in depth about that in a topic Tuesday later on. I'm pretty sure it's a topic like how did you get into nail polish? So I won't yammer on too much about it right now, but I do have to say that these two polishes, absolutely horrible. They're the worst polishes. <laughs> They're so bad. Uh, I think I've also only worn each one of them one time. Starry Starry Night is like a jelly blue with silver glitters running through it. And it's just, it's a beast to remove. And it just doesn't look that great. The original I read had like actual diamond dust in it, not just glitter. And so it's like, if you're gonna get it, at least get the one with like diamonds in it, I guess. If, if you're into that, I don't know. And imported bubbly is not only sheer, but it's like a pearl finish. So it's very streaky. And I didn't understand what I was doing wrong when I first got that polish because I didn't know that there are polishes that just 
aren't opaque at the beginning. I didn't understand that there were polishes that were gonna be a little see-through that are designed to look a little bit streakier. And so I was like, what am I doing wrong? And I was like layering and layering and layering and it just wasn't becoming opaque. So like those two, I don't ever reach for them. I don't ever really want to reach for them, but it's kind of like a nostalgia thing where I'm like, these are the two that started it all. These two led to nearly 2,000 nail polishes sitting in filing cabinet type things behind me in my room. Who knew that that's what those would lead to? Number three on my list is China Glaze's Zombie Zest. I have worn this exactly twice since I got it in 2020. I love the fact that I was able to get my hands on this polish, but I believe that the original collection came out in like 2010. So bottles of this are only getting scarcer by the day. You know, people are using them up, people are spilling them, people are hoarding them. I don't know, but there aren't, there can't be that many left. And I'm not willing to pay like a crazy top dollar for a bottle of this. It's a beautiful color, but it's just like, to me, it's just not worth it to do that. Especially when uh, Phoebe Moon's brand, Moonshine Manny, has what claims to be a dupe for this polish. So, I mean, I could probably check that out and maybe play a little more fast and loose with this polish than I have been. But I don't know. I just really want to make every wear count with this one. I really am happy to have the original. It's really cool, but it does feel very special to me. So I do want to savor it a little bit. This one's a little bit different than the first two where I'm like, I, ha I have them and I keep them around, but it's like, I don't really want to wear them. This one, it's like, I do want to wear it, but I just don't wear it that often. I think I wear it like once every Halloween time, um, just because I want to savor it quite a bit. Number four is similar to that, and that is my MAC Star Trek Trio. These were part of a limited edition release through MAC Cosmetics. Does the C in MAC stand for cosmetics? Is that like saying ATM machine? I don't know, actually. What does MAC stand for makeup and no i don't know i don't know i don't care it doesn't matter uh mac did a 50th anniversary of star trek release where they had a ton of makeup and these three nail polishes and i wanted everything like i wanted all of it but that was expensive so i bought the three nail polishes i collect star trek memorabilia specifically the original series um which is funny because it's like most of the memorabilia is like, what can we just slap the colors red, yellow, and blue on? And then these suckers will buy it. And I'm like first in line. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to buy that in all three colors. Duh. Um, it's currently all my memorabilia is in storage right now because we just don't have space for that. I mean, I guess I could, I could make space somewhere, but it would look really like weird and out of place. But yeah, when I see other hobbies kind of cross over into nail polish or like other interests cross over into nail polish, I'm like, that I gotta have those, you know? I gotta have stuff like that because it's always cool when multiple interests kind of like mesh together. And I bought those, to be quite honest, this is like the only time I've ever really done this with nail polish. I bought them more because it's like Star Trek and I wanted to keep them with my Star Trek mem memorabilia. And actually when that stuff is out and on display, that's where they live. They don't sit in my drawers when I have the Star Trek stuff out. They actually sit with the Star Trek stuff, which is like the only thing I've ever done that with when it comes to nail polish. But yeah, that's another one where it's like when they're gone, they're gone. You can't really get a replacement. And so I think that even if, if I somehow managed to use all those up, I would not get rid of the bottles. I would clean them out and keep them in my Star Trek memorabilia display. So now we're gonna move into more like broader categories, not specific necessarily nail polishes, but maybe a category or a full collection. And the first one, so number five on my list is pretty much all of my luxury or high end or just generally expensive nail polishes. So that's like my Christian Louboutin, my Supreme, um, the Pleasing Ones with Harry Styles. Uh, what else do I have? Chanel, a Dior, I think I got a Dior back there. Even the Smith & Colts that I bought. Like I just, I don't tend to wear those as much because I definitely bought them more for the bottle or the name brand or a review or something like that. I look at those more like collector slash display pieces and that is like their primary function. And it's not that I'm like, I would never wear these because they're not all bad polishes. Some of them are. Some of them are, but they're not like, they're not the worst either. They're like in my head, for some reason, they're, they're functional nail polishes secondary. 
And so it's not that I actively am like, I don't want to wear these or I would never wear these. It's just, I just don't think of that first when I think of them. When I think of the Harry Style pleasing nail polishes, I'm not like, man, I would love to wear those. I think, man, that's a cool looking bottle, even though most people disagree with me. And same with the Christian Louboutin and things like that. Number six is all of my Sally Hansen chrome like nail makeup polishes. I got these in a big random D stash and owning these is more like nail polish history for me than anything else. Even though they're not, I don't think they're that old. I mean, they're kind of old, but they predate when I got into nail polish. So I had never even seen these before. And then the first couple times I showed them on camera, people were like, oh my God, I remember those. And they were like getting all nostalgic for them. And I was just like, oh, oh, these are like, people think these are interesting. Okay. Let me, let me look into them. And I, I looked at how old they are and I was like, oh, okay. These are kind of like historical. I'm just not in my metallics era anymore. Maybe I'll revisit it, but I still just want to hang on to these indefinitely because I, I just have to, I have to, I, I don't really get rid of nail polish to begin with. And one time I was thinking like, if I were to de-stash, what would be the first polishes I would get rid of? And I was like, probably those Sally Hansen chrome ones for just practical reasons. I don't wear them. But then I was like, yeah, but they're like, they're history. I got to keep them, you know? So I, this is why I can't get rid of nail polish because I talk myself into keeping it. But yeah, I don't think I've ever once been like, man, I should wear one of those. It just, it's never crossed my mind. Number seven on my list is another Sally Hansen collection. And that is all of my Sally Hansen Crayola Insta Dries. I bought these solely because they're Crayola. They look like crayons. I absolutely love colorful things. And you know, what is more colorful than a box of crayons? I love it. It's just, it's a full nostalgia bait buy. And I, I think they did three, three or four separate releases with this. And honestly, if they said tomorrow, like we're releasing even more, I would buy all of them because I don't know. They're just so cute. The caps are a little great. Like, you know, like the squiggle on the end of the Crayola. I'm going to show a picture. I don't know why I'm feeling like I need to describe this to you in great detail. You know what a Crayola crayon looks like. And they're all named after the actual crayons. And they even did like the, do you remember when they came out with metallic crayons? I remember metallic crayons. Those were so cool. And they did a metallic crayon launch. And even though I don't wear metallics, like, yeah, I need those. <sighs> These are another one that it's like, I'm not anti using them. I've used them from time to time. I do use them here and there. I just, Sally Hansen Insta Dry, I love her. She's great. They're very cheap. And for the price point, they do a good job. But at this point, I definitely have a lot of stuff that's better than those. And I also just want to preserve those crayons. If, if I used one up, I would save the bottle. There's, I would definitely save the bottle. I'd clean it out and put it on display. I just, they're too cute. I can't. And then the final thing on my list of polishes I love to own, but never wear would be all of my toppers, which I'm trying to change this year. But I am just so attracted to a fun topper. A, a weirdly shaped glitter really gets me or like a funky color combo or something like that. They always suck me in. I buy them and I'm like, I love these. And I put them on my swatch sticks and then I put them in my drawer and I'm like, you live there now. You're never coming out again. You live there. Uh, I, I need to get better about that. I've been wearing some toppers this year. Not as many as I thought I was going to get to by this point even, but I still, it's, it's making me think more about them. But I just, I love a weird topper. I love an unusual topper and I don't know why I feel compelled to buy them all the time despite almost never using them organically, but here we are. So yeah, that is my list. Obviously there are probably a bajillion more that I could go on and on and on about, but these were like the first eight that really came to my head as I was making my list. So clearly those are the ones that are like in the most forefront of my mind. Let me know in the comments if there are any polishes you guys have that you bought because you wanted like fully knowing that you were never going to wear it or something like that. Polishes that you just love to have, love to look at, but you never find yourself putting them on your nails and why that may be, whether it's just, it's a hassle to take off or it's just like a nostalgia thing. I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.